Hey fellas, today we'll be going over my tank build. Basically, it's the build I run with when I feel like using armor, or big heavy weapons like shotguns and light machine guns. While this build isn't quite meant to be versatile as the Jack of All Trades, oddly enough it's probably more flexible in the skills than the other build. Reason being is that I'll change them around based on how I feel, or what the heist calls for, or simply picking up stuff that my teammates don't have. Mainly what I'll change is either I'll pick up a saw or C4. Now right now I don't have either of them, but they're both incredibly handy utilities that this build has the ability to pick up. However, you will be limiting yourself in combat if you pick up a saw, and you would be unable to supply your team with ammo if you went with C4. So generally, if you have a semi-competent team, worrying about saving a little bit of time with a saw or C4 is usually unnecessary, especially since you have drill skills already. Of course, this is generalizing, and on some heists, specifically like the transport ones, it's infinitely more useful to pick up a saw or C4 for your team upon having good drill skills. So, for most heists, good drilling is all you really need, and if you find yourself in a game where people absolutely need that saw or C4 because they can't last the extra duration of, a, of an upgraded drill, you're probably shit out of luck anyway. So, the purpose of this build is to tank myself up as much as possible while retaining at least a little bit of my mobility. Any and all armor skills I've probably picked up, and I've also tried picking up a lot of the mobility skills in the other trees so I'm not as slow as a turtle. Of course, as I mentioned earlier, uh, if I need to, I will take away these mobility skills and a few other things to get a saw or C4. In my current setup, I have neither of those, but somewhere in the description, I'll link to you guys what the build would look like if I were to shoot for one of those. Uh, I do think it is a little unnecessary to pick up both the saw and C4, so I would not recommend getting both. You're pretty much just hindering yourself at that point. In this current setup in Mastermind, I shot for Endurance, in Ghost, Shinobi and Sprinter, and in Fugitive, Running gun. These are the big mobility skills, and they'll make your character as fast as you can possibly make it. Everything else is just kind of icing on the cake. You know, Hidden Blade, if you ever do want to stealth. Uh, SMG Specialist, I like picking that up because it opens a whole new uh, set of your inventory that you can use. A whole bunch of SMGs just become a lot more usable. Fast Hands, always good for fast bag moving. And the meat of this build is in Enforcer and in Technician, as you can see here. So I guess let's go with Enforcer first. There is a slight melee focus to this build, so I have picked up uh, Pumping Iron Ace uh, due to the katana being added to the game. I actually do find myself slashing at specials quite often, and I will kill them. So, uh, yeah, picking up the Ace version of this is uh, something new that I didn't used to do before, but I definitely do now. Transporter, of course, just like with Fast Hands, almost a must-have skill for any build. And, uh, well, these four, um, Underdog, Die Hard, Shotgun Impact, Stun Resistance, these are to help get to higher tiers, but they're also very nice in themselves. Stun Resistance, very good for any loud Death Wish mission. They throw flashbangs like crazy, and, uh, you know, helping your visibility is always good. Underdog just ups your survivability. I don't really care too much about the, uh, pro, or the basic version. When you're surrounded by three enemies, you receive 15% damage bonus. I like the ace version more. It pairs really well with a lot of the perk decks, and it stacks uh, quite nicely with that. Die hard, you can use your primary weapon to bleed out, and your armor recovery rate is faster. This is very nice in conjunction with bulletproof. Shotgun impact and shotgun CQB. These two skills go hand in hand. This one increasing your damage. Uh, stability with all shotguns doesn't really matter too much. And this one increases your reload speed. Both very nice and almost a must-have for any shotgun users. Uh, double ammo. I did not ace this because, well, one, I didn't have enough points. But two, uh, generally, as an enforcer yourself, you'll pick up fully loaded. And because of that, you won't need to rely on ammo bags yourself. So this is mostly just to help your teammates. Uh, unless you also run like, you know, like a minigun, flamethrower, RPG, the weapons that can't pick up ammo off the ground. But usually that's, a uh, you know, few and far in between. So like I said, as a heavy enforcer, I love fully loaded. Probably one of my favorite skills in enforcer. It just makes your ammo pick up super good. And uh, the basic version also just increases your total ammo. So there's really nothing bad about that. Of course, Iron Man, you can't really be a true tank without the ICTV armor. And you need at least the basic version of that. Ace version, kind of nice, but uh, it's a little bit of a waste on the points, I suppose. Considering that we have a lot of weapons that are very effective against shields now, you know. Explosives, snipers. So yeah, I do like that running gun, but uh, it's, it's hard to get those 8 points. And of course, Overkill also pairs very well with Shotgun CQB and Shotgun Impact. Uh, just basically gives you more damage to your shotguns anytime you kill something with a shotgun, so... 
It helps you chain kills very well, makes you very combat effective. And that's what this tree mostly is, the combat effective tree. You know, it increases your combat effectiveness and it gives you a, a whole bunch of utility with your armor and such. Now, for this tree, this tree, basically, I could pretty much go without it. And the only reason, real reason why a lot of people go into Technician is to get Bulletproof as a tank build. Uh, Bulletproof improves your armor so you can absorb 50% more damage. And when you have ICTV, that 50% is quite a lot. Also, the Ace version is very good. The recovery rate of your crew, of you and your crew, increased by 25%. So, you know, just really buffing that armor of yours, as well as your teammates too, so uh, you're very helpful. Now, with the drills, uh, like I mentioned in the Jack of All Trades, these two skills are pretty much what you need for good drills. I have the silent version because, you know what, it's kind of funny. I like having a silent drill. I don't like hearing it all the time. So, anytime I put down drills, they're super silent. You could pick up this, or you could pick up one of the other skills. You know, they'd be a lot more useful. But for me, if I'm not bringing C4, there's no reason to pick up any of these. If I'm not bringing a sentry, there's really no reason to pick up any of those right there. So, you know what? I go for silent drilling. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> uh, shockproof. Shockproof is kind of a nice skill. At least I feel. I mean, for four points, it helps you get away from tasers that sometimes get you from really long distances. You can't shoot them. And it just gives you a higher chance of breaking free from them, which is not that bad of a deal. I mean, they could tase you again right away. It's not nearly as good as the Ace version where you'll knock them down and you'll make sure that that taser can't get you again. But, I mean, uh, considering what else there is, like I said, I'm not picking up C4 or Sentry skills. It's not that bad. I'll pick this up. And uh, for these two, well, you can just kind of ignore those two. I just picked those up because I really have to uh, uh, just get to this tier. So these two are actually pretty good assault rifle skills. Sharpshooter, you are 20% more accurate with all single shot weapons. Your stability with all rifles but increased by 25%. That's really nice for all assault rifles. You really can't go wrong with that. And this one is a, a higher, a faster snap to zoom. I actually don't like the ace version because it increases your zoom level with assault rifles and snipers. But then when you use anything else, it just seems kind of weird. So I like having everything at an equal zoom, you know? So yeah, these two skills, fairly nice for assault rifles. And in a nutshell, that's what this build is. Of course, like I said, you could get rid of some skills to pick up C4. Eh, this tree could be worked around quite a bit. And you could also pick up a saw. Right now, I actually have prepared uh, two different versions of the build I would use. So you could uh, pick up a portable saw like this. And of course, that would mean I would have to get rid of something. So I got rid of the fugitive skills. Everything else would be the same. And uh, with this one, I have picked up C4 instead. So this is what the tree would look more like if I picked up C4. I would get these drills, but I would also get the C4 skills because, you know, since I carry C4s, I might as well pick them up, right? And then I'll pick up C4, bulletproof. And of course, I have to give up something, but this time I didn't take away from mobility, but I took away from my melee skills. And, uh, you know, with this build, you got to trade off a lot of stuff if you want something else. So in the current setup I have right now, it is basically, in a nutshell, uh, something that I can use for every highest where I'm, I'm not feeling like, well, you know, I wish I had that. Yeah, I am missing out on that saw and C4, but as I mentioned, uh, if you're with a relatively competent team, it's not entirely necessary to have those. It'll, it always will be helpful, but not always necessary. Alright, so I decided to give you a quick show of what I mean by how I would switch those skills around to get the saw or C4. Uh, in this particular build, uh, I've picked up the saw right here. Uh, you could pick up Berserker too, but with the saw mods that they've added to the game, it's not really necessary to have it anymore. Uh, you could pick up a sharp blade and a fast motor, and uh, it's kind of like having a mini Berserker, so it's not too much of a problem. Plus, you have ammo bags, so uh, you can always restock your blades anyway. Now, because I have picked up this, I've completely got rid of my fugitive stuff, and, you know, I've picked up the saw. And if I wanted to get C4, I would, uh, I've reworked this tree quite a bit. I would actually get the C4 skills instead of completely ignoring them. Then, of course, get C4 itself. And an enforcer, instead of taking away the uh, mobility skills, I actually took away the melee skills. So, there's always something you have to give up to get one of these things. Uh, you know, it, it's very marginal, and it's really preference at this point, you know. If you're not a melee guy, you could take away the melee skills to get that C4. If you don't really care about being slow, you could take away the mobility skills and get the uh, 
the C4 or the Saw, it's really up to you. And that's what I kind of like about this build as well. Uh, the main features of it is mainly just being super tanky and combat effective, so at least you need ICTV and bulletproof. You know, every tank user knows that. So yeah, it's, uh, you know, play with it and see what you like. Unlike the Jack of All Trades build, where I kind of just stuck with one perk deck, which was Grinder, with this build, I'll use a whole lot of different perk decks, just depending on what I feel. But definitely my favorite one is Sociopath. And I really like Showdown a lot. Killing an enemy at medium range has a 75% chance to spread panic among your enemies. Panic is a very fun mechanic. Might not be very useful, but you cannot deny how great it is to see a cop put his head in between his knees and shake in fear. And it's also a lot better than what it was before when it was a 25% at short range. So uh, that's quite nice. There's also regeneration for your armor, regeneration for your health, and also a bit of damage resistance. So Sociopath has a little bit of everything. Uh, if you want to be a team player, you could use Gambler uh, to heal both yourself and your teammates. Right now, I'm not running a Berserker setup, so, you know, I have no problem uh, regening my health at all. Infiltrator is another favorite for tank users now these days, uh, mainly probably because of life drain. Striking an enemy with your melee weapon regenerates 20% of your health. This cannot occur more than once every 10 seconds. 20% is a lot. Five strikes will give you all of your health back, so you know in 50 seconds you can have full health again. And you don't even have to kill the enemy, you just have to melee them. <laughs> One of the uh, interesting things you could do is get someone on your team to dominate an enemy, use the money bundle, and just hit them every 10 seconds, and you'll get your health back real easy. Of course, it also has a lot of damage reduction, so Infiltrator is good in that sense as well. Uh, let's see, Gambler, Infiltrator, what else would I use with this? Armor, of course, and Muscle. Armor just really buffs your armor a whole lot. And uh, Muscle gives you a whole lot of uh, health, and it also gives you a passive regen, which is probably the best addition. Makes Muscle a very good perk deck. If you want to be a team player, you could use Crew Chief too, but yeah, uh, for me, I would mostly stick to things like Sociopath, Gambler, Infiltrator, Armor, and Muscle, and uh, mainly Sociopath, just because I like that Panic. The Panic is very fun. could also use Yakuza if you were uh, really so inclined to, but I don't really prefer Yakuza. So yeah, with this build, uh, the perk deck interpretation is really up to you, and uh, I do like that a lot. There are a lot of perk decks for armor builds, and uh, you can change your playstyle a little bit to... Uh, to each one. As suggested by a user in the last build, I'll show off the top three primaries and secondaries that I might use in this build. Of course, I'll use way more than just those weapons, and I'll try to tell you guys what else I'll use, but I'll definitely go more into those top three, showing off the way it's modded and everything. With the weapons, I'll also try to choose ones that are very different from each other, so you get a nice little variety of what I generally use. So for my three primaries, one of them would have to be the Stakeout 12-gauge shotgun, or the AA-12, with a long barrel, shark teeth nozzle, auto fire, lead combo, and the drum mag. Now compared to the other shotguns in the primary slot, it's on the weaker side, but it does have a lot of ammo and it has a good rate of fire, so it's nice and spammy, and with the set of skills I have, it'll be able to chain kills left and right fairly easily, as long as you get that first kill. So, for my second weapon, I recommend the Repeater 1874 Sniper Rifle. Now, with the snipers, you really can't go wrong choosing any of them. I mean, Levensager, R93, Thanatos, Mosin the Gaunt. Um, but my favorite definitely has to be the Repeater as well as the Mosin the Gaunt. But I'll show off the Repeater this time. And with the Repeater, there's not very many mods on it. You can have the Long Range Barrel, and uh, I prefer not having a scope because I do like the Iron Sights quite a bit. It makes it very effective for close range combat, and it's uh, easy enough to use for long range as well, so you can still take care of snipers and such. And as I said, uh, with snipers, you really can't go wrong with it. I mean, with this build, with fully loaded, uh, any sniper is going to be useful because uh, while you will be shooting enemies at long range and you're not going to be picking up as many ammo packs, uh, you'll still be well supplied because of fully loaded uh, boosting your ammo efficiency pickup. Now, for the last weapon I'd like to recommend, it is the Piglet Grenade Launcher with Incendiary Round, uh, the Compact Laser Module, and the War Torn Stock. Basically, I put on the War Torn Stock to get as much accuracy as I can. The Piglet is not the most accurate grenade launcher, so uh, getting as much accuracy as I can is uh, a must have for me. And I also put on Incendiary Rounds. Now, the thing about the Piglet with Incendiary Rounds is it becomes an Area of Denial tool. Shoot it at choke points and the cops won't be able to get through, and if they do, they'll be uh, damaged by the fire. 
And even if you accidentally nade yourself and, you know, set your room on fire, uh, you're quite a tanky person, you know, with the build you have. You have ICTV, bulletproof. You're not going to take damage right away from the fire, whereas if you were a dodge guy, you'd be burning pretty fast and it would start chipping away at your health. With this, wouldn't be too much of a problem. So I do like having this as a, uh, a tool for choke points and uh, close quarters maps. Now, of course, you could also use a whole bunch of other weapons. I do like using the LMGs and the minigun every now and then. Uh, the only thing I don't like about them is that they're very slow. So, with an already slow character, you're made even slower by holding a light machine gun and a minigun. So that's one thing I really don't like about it. That's probably the biggest reason why I don't use uh, weapons like this more. Same with the minigun. I mean, they're very effective killing killing machines, and they have a lot of ammo, and they spew bullets like crazy. But, and that speed reduction is not that nice. Of course, you can also go with any assault rifle of your choosing. Assault rifles are good with any builds. Now, on to the secondaries. So, for my top three uh, secondaries, one of them would have to be the Cross Vertex submachine gun, or the Chris Super V, the Vector. And this particular one has the Funnel of Fun nozzle, auto fire, compact laser module, and the two piece stock. Now, basically, with this weapon, I went just for straight full damage, and, uh, well, the SMGs I prefer using in this build are things like the Vertex, the Jackets piece, the MP5. Basically, the high damage, high rate of fire SMGs. Uh, maybe not so this one, but uh, yeah, with fully loaded, you're going to be picking up ammo like crazy, so you don't need to be ammo conservative, so just spew bullets everywhere, and that's exactly what this thing does. And unlike the Jackets piece, which is, you know, really similar, I think I like the Cross Vertex more simply because it has a faster reload. Uh, if you expend all the ammo in the Jackets piece, the reload is quite slow. So, weapon number two for my secondary would have to be the HRL-7 Rocket Launcher. There's no better way to say fuck you to a cop than an RPG to the face. And there's only one way to mod this, too. You can put a sign on it. Got that middle finger. Because fuck you, cop! <laughs> Uh, having a good explosive weapon on a tank build is, uh, always nice. Actually, any build with explosive weapons is, uh, good, but with fully loaded, you're gonna be getting that extra rocket, and, uh, you know, you supply yourself with ammo bags, so you're never gonna run out of rockets. Well, uh, you will, but you'd have to use them pretty, pretty excessively. And for my last weapon, last but not least, of course, the Judge. My favorite secondary shotgun, my favorite... Shotgun, my favorite weapon, period, <laughs> of this game, the Judge. <laughs> With shark teeth nozzle, lead combo, and, well, this bad boy, it is amazing at clearing out rooms and waves and waves of enemies in quick succession. It is a revolver shotgun. How can you not like this thing? It is, it is my perfect shotgun in this game. I love it. It's my favorite weapon. <laughs> so those are the weapons that I use. Um, for the secondaries, there actually isn't too many more weapons that I would use. Like, in the primaries, I would, you know, the whole plethora of assault rifles and LMGs and the minigun, I could use those, flamethrower, stuff like that. But in the secondary slot, there's really only three shotguns. Um, I would pretty much avoid all of the pistols. And there are quite a few SMGs, but I would normally stick to, say, Jackets Piece, Cross Vertex, uh, MP5, stuff that... Hits hard, hits close, you know, I'm not really looking to shoot stuff too far away. If I really was worried about that, I would bring an assault rifle or a sniper rifle to deal with long ranges and uh, uh, snipers. Stuff that I can't deal with with anything up close. So, those are the weapons. And, of course, for my melee, definitely the Shin Sakudo Katana. It is a very good melee for killing anything. I mean, just take a look at the stats. Especially with uh, my skill boosting its damage. You're going to be killing a lot of stuff with 105 damage, and it's a fairly fast melee, too. Of course, with your throwable, you can bring any throwable you want. I prefer the Molotov because, well, just like the Piglet, it is a nice area of denial tool, but much more effective. And for your armor, of course, ICTV, equipment, ammo bag. And uh, I actually uh, would like to chip in. I do like this inventory a lot. I like having everything in one screen. It does take a little getting used to because, you know, there's no skills anymore and I would instinctively go, oh, where's my skills? I can't find it. Oh yeah, that's right, it's inventory. But this is a, a nice little change to the game, so I do enjoy that. 
In the past, I didn't actually have an armor build in my set skills, but ever since they changed the way the perk decks worked, I went ahead and started using a tank build again, and it turns out I've been enjoying myself quite a bit. Now, before everyone goes into the whole armor versus dodge debate, and shit starts getting thrown everywhere, let me just say that in my opinion, both are good, and they both have their own upsides and downsides. One of the things I quite dislike about our community as a whole is the debate of what the hell is best. You know, I know as gamers it's in our nature to find the most efficient and easiest way to do something, but goddamn does that get boring, and people often blindside anything they don't like. Everyone's always asking, you know, well, what's the best gun? What's the best deal? What's better? Dodge rubber. And I'm just sitting here saying, well, I like this because it's fun, or I like it just because, and you should just use what you want to use because it's fun or something. Man, in this game, especially since it's PvE and not even PvP, there's no reason to sweat over that shit all the time. Just a pet peeve I've got, because this, this shit always gets brought up when I'm talking about builds. Anyway, when you've got a dodge build, you've got your crazy speed and the inherent ability to complete objectives because you can dodge, dodge large groups of enemies and get around relatively unscathed. With armor, you've got consistent tankiness that doesn't rely on RNG, and it gives you much more staying power in firefights, making you more combat effective, as long as you can find decent cover from completely open spaces. So when you play your cards right, you'll be effective regardless of what type of build you have. I like bringing armor builds on maps where I know I'll have a lot more cover, and I'm not exposed to long ranges where enemies can easily chip away at my armor, like it's crust on white bread. Basically, I'll bring this build to any maps with a lot of close quarters combat and high close proximity spawn rates, so they'll be spawning really close to you or right on top of you. With all the shotgun skills and shotguns you can use at your disposal, you'll have no problem dealing with large waves of enemies. I consider shotguns to be some of the most powerful weapons in the game, and with a huge variety of them at your disposal, you don't really get bored of them too often. I mean, you can use like the, the weaker spammy ones like the M1014 or the A12, the middle ground ones like the Rhinefield and Raven, or your powerhouse ones with a uh, little capacity like the double barrels. <laughs> I love the double barrels in this game, they're just so fun. Anyway, just like any other build, you've also got the rest of the inventory that doesn't really require skills that can be used, like snipers, assault rifles, the special weapons like the flamethrower, the minigun, the bows. This is a supremely combat efficient build, and I love it. You will lack some of the cheesy survivability perks of having dodge, like, you know, somehow running through an entire map without getting shot by snipers, or sitting in front of a bulldozer without getting shot at all, or basically making the SWAT turret a useless enemy. Like I said, there's always going to be upsides and downsides, but in the end, it really all depends on what you prefer and what fits your, what fits your playstyle the best. With all of the new melees being added to the game these days, uh, some of the more melee-centric perk decks, eh, they get a bit more use these days, you know, stuff like Sociopath and Infiltrator. It adds another degree of variety to your gameplay, one that I do quite enjoy, though I'm a bit sad to see that the majority of old melees just kind of get tossed aside by newer ones like, you know, especially the Katana, Buzzer, Kunai, uh, Mother Fork, or stuff like that. Uh, that's another thing that's uh, pretty great about tank builds is just the amount of perk that you have to choose from. When you run dodge, suit, speed builds, you really only have a few to choose from, and they aren't that different. I mean, for the longest time, we just had Rogue and Crook. And while you could try crazy goofy stuff like using a suit with some of the other perk decks like Bustle or Sociopath, it's never going to be quite as effective as tanking up before using those perk decks. So yeah, I've been quite enjoying this build, and it's a great way to mix things up when playing. And it's definitely got a permanent spot on my set skills, at least for now. Of course, if you weren't elfish like I was with the build, you could go with a C4 or saw to be uh, just that much more helpful to your teammates, but like I said, those things are just nice, not really a necessity for most heists. I mean, I think the best example I can give is, say, playing a pub game of Death Wish Firestarter and getting two dudes bringing in a saw or C4 or a combination of both and yet somehow still consistently failing simply because your teammates can't actually deal with that difficulty anyway. You know, bringing along a SAR-C4 wouldn't have changed that, no matter how much faster you can get the weapons. It's just something that was quite common to see when Death Wish first came around, and even now it happens quite a lot, though not nearly as much, I don't think. I guess that's kind of just the reasoning I give for having the build like this. I mean, at the end of the day, if it's needed, I'll go ahead and change my build on a whim, but generally most heists won't require that. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, that's all I've got to say about that, and uh, I hope you enjoyed.